that is a little more what we're looking for. You can see kind of where it transitions. There's a bite. Come on, take it. There we go. Yep. Right away. There we go. There we go. Yep. That tungsten jig. One of the things I love about drop shots, I think this might be my first fish on the jig and wrap. There we go. There you bit. That's all it took was changing to a leech. Welcome back to the channel. If you are new around here, my name is TJ Erickson. I am a fishing guide and teacher in beautiful Park Rapids, Minnesota. And if you notice, I am in my garage. I'm not on the water. And that is actually because I have already filmed the fishing portion of this video. We had a baseball game for the team that I helped coach. So I had to go catch a bus for our first playoff game. So like I said, I didn't want to waste any time doing an intro, doing any of that. I wanted to get right to fishing because I haven't been out on the water a lot. So I wanted to make sure that I was maximizing my time that I had. But now that I'm back, I will share all of the locations, the presentations, all of that kind of stuff with you here um, a little bit before we get into the fish catching portion of this. So let's talk about locations. Water temps are anywhere from the high 50s to the low 60s on the majority of the lakes in our area. For the most part they've regrouped from spawning and now they are starting that transition. The transition that kind of always happens in this early summer late springtime where they start to move away from these shallow flats. There's a couple different areas that I like to target and I like to check first when I'm going to any body of water. The first one is just any of the adjacent break lines. You know, a lot of times they'll have these shallow flats and then there'll be some sort of break line. Sometimes they're steep, sometimes they're a little more gradual, but there is always some sort of break line off of those big shallow flats. So they're gonna be sliding off of those flats onto those break lines, chasing after that bait in order to put on the feed bait again after the spawn. A lot of times you'll also see them more at the top of this break as say the bottom of the break, depending on the depth. The other thing that I will look for is any sort of adjacent structure. So we're looking for these big shallow flats and then there might be either a point or a saddle or maybe some sort of flat. A lot of times that has something to do with some sort of additional structure. Maybe it's rocks, maybe it's a weed patch. A lot of those different irregularities are holding something different. One of my favorite areas to target this time of year and actually one of the areas that I caught the most fish yesterday was an area that was having some emerging weeds because these fish just got done spawning, they're ready to feed and in those emerging weeds is a lot of times a lot of bait fish. So that's a natural magnet for a lot of these post-spawn fish to be when they are ready to start feeding again. So kind of how I approached this yesterday, I hadn't been out a lot, so I didn't really have a great idea where some of these fish were going to be. Um, but what I did is I set my contour highlights, I set my red, my shallow, from 0 to 10 feet. So that was kind of my areas that I was looking for these big shallow flats. So you could see some big red areas. Then I set 10 to 20 feet as green. That was my kind of intermediate area because that's where you're gonna find some of this adjacent break line, these different points, these different saddles, some different flats. So I looked at for all those different areas that were adjacent to that shallow structure and I started cruising that with my side imaging. And what I would do is I would go probably about 15 to 20 feet. That's kind of where I would hang out for depth. And then I would take my side imaging and I would drive all the way around these and I would look to see if I could see any fish. You know, some areas were rockier so it was a little bit harder to tell fish. Some areas were sandy so they stuck out really easily and I'll show you some screenshots here. And there are some areas where you could clearly see some transitions. Maybe it was a sand to weed transition. Maybe it was a rock to sand transition. Wherever you could find some of these transition lines, that is a lot of times where fish were hanging out. So then what I would do is I would actually put my trolling motor down and I would drive around some of these shallow flats off in that 15 to 20 foot range that way I could see up a little bit shallower and not spook these fish and I would just drive around until I saw pods of fish when I would see a pod of fish I would immediately stop hit spot lock and then I would take my live scope out and start panning around until I see these groups of fish so I would have to keep up with them keep moving forward follow along with these groups of fish so that way I could always be pitching right into a group so that's how I attacked it yesterday. Let's jump into some more of the details and show you some of the fish catching right here. I'm kind of scattered all over up there. <clears throat> I'm gonna work my way over this flat. Oh, there's a bite. There we go. That is what we are talking about. That was a walleye bite. Oh, that one felt good. Oh man. That is what we've been waiting for for a long time. Feels like a decent one. Oh. Of course I have a mess. I've been running through so many rods here. Oh, that. Oh. That is what we've been waiting for. There you can see that tungsten jig. 
just perfect. Oh, I was going with a little bit of a more snap jigging approach and it just hit it right on the drop. Oh, that's what we've been waiting for for a long time this morning. Been pitching on a lot of fish. All right, so a little update here. It's been a long morning. You know, I've been out fishing for an hour or so and I've been driving around and I've been seeing a lot of different fish. Um, I'm seeing a lot of fish shallow. I'm seeing some fish starting to slide out into some of those transition areas. I've been pitching on a lot of different fish. I've been using a lot of different presentations, just trying to get something to go. I've been very finesse. I've been very like a snap jig, more aggressive. And I just have not been able to get anything going. Um, wind's picking up here a little bit. So I'm hoping that's going to improve the bite. We don't have a lot of time here, um, but I'm going to keep pitching on these fish for a little bit. See if we can find another. You can see as I scan around at the live scope, you can start to see some off at about 60, 70 feet, just a couple little flickers. And as I go around, you can see some more. So there's some fish here. You can see them on the side imaging as I kind of go back and forth. Um, but I'm going to keep pitching on these fish and hopefully we can get a few more to bite. Seemed like there's a transition. It was kind of like a hard weed edge onto the sand and they were right kind of on the edge of that. Um, a little bit more onto the sand. There's a bite. Come on, take it. Yeah, I think he's got it. There we go. Another fish. Oh, that feels good. Finally getting onto a group of fish that's a little bit more active here. That one was a little closer to the boat. Another quality fish here too. Another good one right there. That one's about 22 inches. And that's a lot of times what you're going to see on some of these this time of year. We're getting into some of those transition periods. <clears throat> you can see that was a pretty skinny fish. That's a spawned out female right there. And they are done with the spawn now and they're kind of regrouping, um, getting ready to try to put the feed bag on, kind of regrouping from that spawn. Well, sweet. After going, like I said, about an hour or so without catching a fish at all, being able to catch a couple fish on almost back to back casts like that feels pretty darn good. Seeing some fish here on the side imaging. I'll take a screenshot. They are a little bit, uh, a little bit distorted, but yeah, there you can see them <clears throat> now on the live scope, about 40, 50 feet out. I'll pitch over to them, hopefully pull right through them. See if we can get whacked by one of these guys. Yep, right away on the drop. I'm a little worried that this one's gonna be a pike by how it bit. But I saw a new group pitched up to them. They hadn't seen it yet. Let's see what we, oh, it's a good walleye. It's a good walleye. Oh, that's fun. Like I said, when you get some of these post-spawn females up in the shallows feeding, it can be a lot of fun. A little bit bigger one here even. Oh, there we go. Oh, that is what we're talking about. Man, that feels good. Like I said, after not, Getting many bites early and seeing a lot of fish. This one is just a hair bigger. That one's coming in at 24 and a half. Oh, it feels good to be back out and catching some fish. There you can see another pretty good group there, about 50 feet out. Oh yeah, you can see them on the side imaging here too. Screenshot those for ya. There's a fish. Oh, stay with it. There we go. There we go. Had to work through that one a little bit more. Throw quite a few casts at them. Oh yeah. Well, that's what we like to see. This one's a little bit smaller. Another decent walleye here like i said that one's a little more of that eater size variety 17 18 inches just a beaut man i just have not gotten much of a chance to get out fishing this year so being able to get out and set hook into a few walleyes just feels so good i've been throwing the jig and minnow at them here for a little bit and uh like i said i haven't been getting quite as many bites but there's still a pretty decent school over there so i'm actually switching to a drop shot and a leech um, just try to give them something a little bit different to look at, see if we can't trigger a few more bites. Oh, 
First cast, I'm gonna get the leech. Ooh, I have my drag set way too loose. I apparently didn't check this drag first. First cast on the jig and the leech. Sometimes, ooh, that was a good little run. Oh, sometimes all it takes is that little bit different presentation, something that they haven't seen just yet. I'm boat flip this guy, another one like that. Like I said, one of the things I love about drop shots is you get them right in the lip like that. This one definitely in that eater size variety. So we're mixing it up a little bit more, but just being able to kind of pick through this pot of fish, um, try to kind of maximize your bites because like I said, we've been seeing a lot of different groups of fish today. We had a little bit of a cold front move in. Um, we were sitting in those kind of seventies for quite a few days. Now this morning it was a low of like 42. So I was wondering if fish were gonna be a little bit inactive and clearly by the first groups that I saw, they were very inactive. So when you do finally find a group that's active, you wanna maximize that. Um, and like I said, a lot of times that means changing up your presentations just a little bit to give them something else that way you can catch as many fish as possible out of that group there we go on the drop just like it's supposed to be there you go i'm gonna loosen up the drag just a little bit for the fight here because they can fall off so easily on these jigging wraps when you're using braid Oh, that's fun. I think this might be my first fish on the jigging wrap for the year. Oh, I love it. Not much better than seeing a group of fish on the live scope, pitching to them, and then getting a whack on the drop. That one was just barely hooked. Had it pinned right on the underside, tried to trap it to bottom. Another eater size fish. Oh, that's so much fun. I do just want to pause quick and say a big thank you to The Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video. If you're not familiar with The Ridge Wallet, it is a very small minimalist wallet and it's very convenient to have. Um, I know when I'm in the boat in the summer, either guiding or fishing, I hate having a lot of bulky things in my pocket. So I end up taking my wallet out, setting it off to the side, keeping it in my pickup, and then I forget it. So being able to have this smaller, profile of this wallet is huge for me because I keep it in my pocket and a lot of times I forget it's even there um, and it doesn't bother me. So I have really loved this wallet. It's very convenient for me. They have a lot of really cool styles. I have the carbon fiber one, which I really like. Um, they actually have another one that looks like the contours of a lake map on it, which is really cool. And I'm a little bit regretting that I didn't get that one, um, but I really like this one as well. So if you're looking for a gift for Father's Day um, for that dad that just has everything, this is a great option because I can guarantee you he probably doesn't have something like this and I know he'll like it. Um, and also, if you are looking at getting an extra 15% off, you can check out the link in my description below and you can use code TJ Erickson in all caps and I'll put all that information in the description below as well. Now we're gonna get back to some more fish catching but I just want to say a quick thanks to The Ridge for supporting this channel. There's one. Yep, that is what we are talking about. Whoa. I don't think I was getting up to him enough that first time so I bounced over just a little bit closer. I think it's a bass. Sure enough, it's a bass. Jig and minnow catch just about everything. Large mouth. And a decent one at that. There's one right on it. Well, came up for it, kind of swung but missed. Try a leech. Coming for it. Hey, bit. That's all it took was changing to a leech. That is what he wanted. Man, he came up and looked three, four times at that minnow. And all it took. Whoa. Whoa, this guy is feisty. All it took was switching down that leech. You could actually see him on the live scope. Hopefully, I was blocking the sun well enough. Dropped down that leech and it came up and whacked it. There we go. Sweet. 
These have all been fairly quality fish. This one right around that 20 inch mark again. Oh, well, that is going to do it for today. Quick hitter. Got to go hop on the bus for our baseball trip here. Um, hope you enjoyed. It was a lot of fun just getting out. Like I said, I haven't been able to fish a whole lot. So anytime I can get out and put a bend in the rods for a little bit is a win for me. Uh, so being able to put a few fish in the boat, put a pattern together, keep moving around from group to group to find some active fish was key today. I'm not going to talk a lot about rods and reels today because I'm going to do a separate video actually coming up where I break down a lot of the rods and reels that I use throughout the summer and kind of the different applications that I use them for. So stay tuned for that. I officially start my summer guiding next week, so it's going to get a whole lot busier, but I'm planning to take a few days here and there to try to film some content for you guys so I can be a little more active this summer. Again, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.